Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Welcome to our newest affiliate, Johnson 970 AM in Portland, Oregon. You hear us every afternoon from 3 until 7 as you head home. Every afternoon. People in Portland are still finding us. So those of you who are listening in Portland, you need to tell everybody you know. You need to call the newspapers, for God's sake. Let them know. Post it on websites. Post it on bulletin boards. Call other stations. Call up some of those other shows. You know what? Call a show on the fan and uh, tell people in case they want to know where Tom Likas went. He, he went to Johnson 970 AM. Just tell them. Just being helpful. That's the idea. Here we are at the studios of Live 105.3 in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> we never have more fun than when we're here. I'll tell you what. Never. Got two big appearances coming up while we're here in Dallas. Uh, tomorrow we'll be at the Lodge from 10 p.m. until midnight. And uh, if you want details about that, you can go find them at the hyphen lodge.com that's uh, 10 5 30 Spangler Road in Dallas and then on Friday the big lister party where everybody's gonna be there at the Firewater Bar and Grill the address 10 261 Technology Boulevard now remember uh, even though uh, our show comes on at 7 p.m. here in Dallas we will begin broadcasting to the rest of America at 5 you need to be there at 5. All right, so that's the deal right there. You'll be there at 5 o'clock. So it's the Lodge tomorrow night from 10 until midnight. And the Firewater Bar and Grill for the live broadcast this Friday from 5 until 9. The list of party. That's the deal. Very excited to be here. Just great. Um, you know, when I go on the road, I get a lot of downtime. I get time to... Uh, Sit on the plane. I've finished the newspaper. It's just time to kill. Time riding around town in the limo. Time in my hotel room. You know, we're always running around doing things. We do two radio shows. I'm now a theatrical producer. Uh, most of my day is spent running around doing stuff. When I go on the road, ironically, you would think I'd be a lot busier. But in reality, I spend a lot of downtime, a lot of time just thinking about stuff. And you know, our show represents a particular philosophy. It goes beyond being a mere radio program. We represent an entire gender. We represent a philosophy that is held by the vast majority of men. And we uh, are really the one and only bastion for men that represents the interests of men that speaks to the opinions of men that speaks to the increasing oppression of men in the workplace on college campuses at your local bar at your private club men are under assault and this is the one and only radio program that doesn't worry about political correctness in this area. We are not worried about whether what we say will offend women. We don't care. We tell the truth. We tell it from a male point of view. And so when I'm on the road, I have time to kind of flesh out some things, to think about things. Things we talk about on the program. But once I stretch out and just close my eyes and just kind of think about it, there are all kinds of things that come to light as I look around at the people sitting around me on the plane as I fly into town, as I look around the hotel lobby, as I talk to people, as I just sit back and do a little people watching. You know, on this program, uh, one of the things I've talked about on this show is the self-esteem of women, and specifically I have uh, postulated that the hotter a chick is, the lower her self-esteem. The proof of this is when you look at it in the opposite direction. How many fat, homely, 
fugly broads are walking around in their tube tops from Torrid, or as I like to call it, Horrid, that store for fat chicks who quote-unquote want to wear stylish clothing, right? So there they are in their designer tank tops with their rolls of flesh oozing out, walking around all large and in charge. They have very high self-esteem. They don't care what you think. I was talking to the woman who cuts my hair. I won't name her because I don't want to finger the person who originally made this comment to her. She listens to the show and she knows who she is and I saw her this week. And here's what she said to me. She said, I don't understand women sometimes. I hear you talk about this stuff on the radio and I don't understand it. She said, women come into me and they say, well, my husband likes my hair long, but I'm going to cut it short anyway because that's what I like. And she said, why do women do that? Why don't you want to make him happy? I mean, why do you think there's more and more divorce? It's because there's more and more fat chicks. More and more fat chicks with short hair. More and more fat chicks who say, hey, you got two hands, do it yourself. Or if you don't like it, I'll just take half of everything you have, whatever. And, and she's absolutely right. She's absolutely right. Women are hell-bent on showing how independent they are and how they're not... They're going to prove how independent they are by doing the exact opposite of what their men would love. And then they can't figure out why their men are on the Internet looking at pornography, why their men want to go to strip clubs, why their men are looking at Maxim and they're holding up posters of Eva Longoria and uh, putting their boxer shorts down around their ankles so they can enjoy these things. The women cannot figure out why we've got this stuff stashed under our beds and hidden on our hard drives. It's because they don't give us what we want. These are women who have very high self-esteem. Very high. They're very happy with who they are. They are not going to make anybody else happy. They are all that... They know that if we don't like it, they can just take our bank accounts with them when they go. That's high self-esteem. Let me give you the examples of low self-esteem. Women who always look perfect. Because they're worried that they're not good-looking enough. They're worried that they're not going to please us. Women who look perfect. Ever see these women? I saw a few of these women at the Playboy Mansion the other day. These are women who, I swear, they looked like they came out of central casting. These women had makeup. They could not have done their own makeup. It was so perfect. It was like you were uh, standing around with somebody who's about to uh, uh, you know, leave the green room of The Tonight Show and sit next to Jay Leno. These women had perfect makeup at 12 noon. We were there at 12 noon for a luncheon. It was the Playmate of the Year luncheon. Perfect. They look perfect. Women who dress perfectly, women who accessorize perfectly, women whose makeup is perfect, women whose hair is perfect, women who constantly are looking in the mirror to make sure everything looks right. You got it wrong if you think these women have high self-esteem. These women have very low self-esteem. The irony of it is that we think women who look that good think they're all that. The reality is, it's the women who look like crap and have their guts hanging out of their tube tops. Those are the ones with high self-esteem. These are the ones you feel very comfortable walking up to at a bar, and they just love saying, you can't try me a drink, you can't buy one with my friend, buy me a drink, you'll buy one with my friend around. Uh, well, you think I do? Go home with you? Go home with you? They just love, they love being in these fat tubs of lard and standing there and telling you that you're not anything, you're not crap. They got guys go to you all the time. Give me these opening lines. But fact is, boys, the hot chicks, the ones who are always worried about looking flawless, these are the ones who have self-esteem issues. Because if you had high self-esteem, you wouldn't have to look perfect all the time. You wouldn't constantly be looking in the mirror. You wouldn't be constantly primping, constantly making sure that your nail polish wasn't chipped, constantly rechecking and rechecking your lip gloss all the time, constantly checking to see if your bra strap was showing, constantly getting on the scale two, three times a day to see if you've gone from 105 to 106, 
That's not high self-esteem. That's low self-esteem. And for men, that's an opportunity to cash in. So what I'm trying to say is, I've kind of fleshed this out a little bit. I've always believed that a woman who's a 9 or a 10 has lower self-esteem than a woman who's a 4 or 5 in America. I've always believed that. But now I really do believe that there's hardcore evidence. If you look at a woman and see how much attention she gives to detail, it's because she's afraid you won't like her unless she looks perfect. Women who don't look perfect, they have very high self-esteem. They're not worried about what you think. They're all that. And if you don't like it, there's another guy where you came along. So when you see women who look like models, they look like supermodels, they look perfect. They're hot. They're built. And they're constantly reapplying lip gloss and looking in their makeup mirrors. Stop getting the idea that these women are untouchable. These are the women who always will think that they're not good enough for you. And those are the ones you can pounce on. Right, boys? Tom like this. Wolf. Tom like this. Wolf. One hundred. Five. Eight hundred. Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom. What's the good word today? Boobs. Boobs are back. The Tom Like It Show. The Tom Like It Show from Dallas at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That is our telephone number. This is Damien in Portland. Damien, you're on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Tom, first time, long time. Nice to have you back. Thank you, Damien. Hey, uh, I was reading in a, a men's magazine the other day, and in the advice column, somebody wrote in and asked, what do you do if your wife becomes fat? The advisor says to him, have her walk two miles in the morning, two miles at night, and after seven days, she'll be 28 miles away. <laughs> Blow me up. I love Tom. that. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Do you care, Matt? Oh, totally. I'm doing great. Man, listen to that. I was just laughing. Um, you, you were so right. I worked at this uh, one retail place, and I was uh, there's a bunch of hot chicks working there, and you know they were just always, you know, do I look okay? How's this look? Da 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 da. And, you know, I'm like, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you run down to this coffee stand and give me a coffee? Oh, sure. You know, can you go get me a pack of cigarettes? Oh, sure. I'm like, can you cover the register by yourself? i got to go smoke a cigarette. Oh, sure. You know, and the big the big broad that worked as the manager, she was a raging bitch. I mean, totally. She she was like, big old butt, that buck teeth, she looked like a mule. You know, and it totally proves it. I mean, every every place I've ever worked in, in like, the customer service industry, the hot chicks are always, like, real passive and polite and willing to please and willing to pretty much do whatever you ask them to do. And the fat bitches, they always got this total aggravate, the total just, you know, no, no, do it yourself. Da -da 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 -da. You know, so I tell know. guys all the time, I, 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 believe me, guys think that all I meet over the years, all I've ever met are actresses and models and big stars and they all know who I am. Mm -hmm. But the reality is I meet plenty of women just because of the places I go, and many of them don't know who I am. Our show is aimed at guys. There are women who don't know what I do. And I'm telling you, models, actresses, singers, uh, uh, chicks who uh, uh, do everything from uh, model in person at auto shows to, to model for magazines, pose nude, whatever. And I'm telling you, these are the chicks who are the most approachable. Guys are intimidated by that and instead take these women who treat them like crap who are fours and fives. I've never understood it. Yeah, I got something to make you chuckle, though. Right? Um, in the company I work for now, I'm a package deliverer, and uh, I uh, convinced this hot chick that I worked with to come work with me for a day, and uh, all I did was sit on my butt and drive the truck and made her pick up the boxes and run to the doors. <laughs> and then uh, a couple days later, I had one of my friends come do it, and I had to pay him 75 bucks, and the chick did it for free. There you go. Yeah, yeah. well, there you go. <laughs> hey, you uh, take me out uh, Kobe style with a gunshot and a bitch? Here you go, Matt. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 
Biatch. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jesse on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I love your show. Thank you, uh, Jesse. I'm from uh, Santa Barbara, California, and uh, I have to say that uh, I did meet a very hot girl one time, and uh, she was not that... Um, she was very hard to approach, and uh, she was all... How much of that was her, and how much of that was you? Uh, I believe that was uh, half of me, and... Uh, Half because of the people that she was around uh, that made it hard to go up with her. And uh, just because the girls... That well, I always tell guys, do not approach women who are out in packs or even in pairs. You know, it, it, because here's what always happens. The homely friend, and remember, every hot chick has a fat and homely friend who makes her look better. Okay. And the fat and homely friend, more than once has had to take a cab home or find her way home because the hotter chick got lucky and got late. Right. So the fat, fugly chick will do anything to be, uh, an, uh, as we say, an ock blocker. You know what I'm saying? They, right. they will do everything they can to make sure that you can't hook up. Yep. So you can't, you know, it, 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 the fact is, if you approach the chick and she had less attractive friends around her, believe me, they don't want her hooking up. Right. But uh, hot chicks are also approached all the time, believe it or not, as much as guys think they're not, well, you know, she's too hot to approach, but they're actually approached all the time. And uh, if you do date a hot chick, you're always going to have that, your your self-confidence is going to go down because uh, she's... Why? If you have her and the other guys the just want her, why would your self-esteem go down? Well, that's true. Do you know how many times I walked into a room with a 10? And sure, every guy's trying to slip her a phone number or talk to her. But guess what? Later on that evening, I was nailing her, and the other guys went home alone. That's true. But my self-esteem went right through the roof. That's true. I, I mean, I did feel good going out with her and stuff, but sometimes it would get under your skin a little bit. I, I don't know why. That's your problem. That's your self-esteem talking. I guess you're right, Tom. Hey, Tom. I mean, remember, you know? if you go home with the chick... Who cares what the other guys want? You have what they want. That's true, Tom. Thank you very much. You're my pop. Thank you, Jesse, son. I appreciate it. My son, Jesse, there. The son I never had. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Jason. Jason, yep. Hey, uh, I date nothing but beautiful women. I try to tell my buddies the hardest parts of saying hi. They're easier than, you know, trying to hook up the Bremelo up here in Tacoma. You get the attitudes from the Bremelos and stuff. And, you know, they think I'm crazy, and uh, I don't care. You know, it's better than nothing. You're either standing there trying to pick up a fat chick or you're hitting on a beautiful girl. You know, what's the difference? You know, you, get right. more you can get rejected by them. anybody, and I'm telling you from experience, and I'm telling you from having... Having lived at every income level, from poor to rich, I'm telling you over the years when I didn't have money, at one time I believed that the fatter girl or the girl who looks like the girl next door would be much easier to get. And once I had money and confidence and success, I realized hotter chicks were much easier to talk to and much easier to get to do what you want them to do. Oh, yeah, I used to always take a bunch of... Uh hassle from the, you know, the big girls, the primolos up here, whatever. You know, it isn't about money, it's just confidence. You know, walk up like you don't care. Hey, if they say no, they say no, you know. Oh, well, it's better than what you had a minute ago. That's right. But and nine you, uh, and there, you can always don't. tell who these girls are because they're always obsessed with looking perfect. Oh, yeah. Plus, you don't have to worry about being on time because they're going to be a half hour late because they're doing their makeup and stuff like that. And it does get to be a little bit of a pain, but oh, well, life goes on. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Jason, well, take thank easy you. Time and, you know, just have these guys, uh, you know, go for broke. That's all you got to do. That's what I'm trying to tell them, for God's sake. Micah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Micah. How you doing? Do you care? Yes, I do, actually. Great. Doing great. Today. Thank um, you. As soon as I heard I had to call in. Um, now, me, myself, I'm 20, and I've dated many a fine chick. And my buddy, the buddy of mine, his stepsister, complete knockout. She's only 16, though, but I won't, you know, do anything with that. But
But this girl, by far, has the highest self-esteem I've ever seen out of any chick. She, all she does is talk about how she, hot she is. Even in her diary, she'll talk about oh how hot she is and how everybody hates her because she's beautiful and it's okay that she's conceited and blah 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 blah. And it's it's I don't understand it. You know, I mean. Well, you know, one explanation, of course, is that uh, many people say that kind of thing, hoping to convince themselves it's true. No. Uh, a good example of a famous person like that is Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> Here's a guy who's on the air, Mr. Blowhard, Mr. I'm uh, better than most people with one half my brain tied behind my back, and I'm this and I'm that. The reality is this is a guy who is uh, allegedly meeting people in parking lots at Denny's with cigar boxes full of cash <laughs> trying to buy drugs. Okay? <laughs> and so, you know, you can sit there and uh, be a blowhard all day long, but... Sometimes I think blowhards are just trying to convince you and and secondarily themselves that the stuff they're saying is true. Right. So you really think she's just full of BS and trying to convince herself of it? I think so. Because I think really hot chicks who are obsessed with their appearance... I mean obsessed. I don't mean the pretty girl who doesn't use makeup and wears a t-shirt and jeans. Oh, and no, this girl... I'm talking about the ones who always look like they're ready to go out for the evening. Yeah, she in the mirror 24-7. Right, like she's in the passenger seat in your car, and she has pulled down the sun visor to look into that mirror there. If she's done that, she's one of those. Oh, uh, okay. Because, yeah, I mean, I've even, we've even read her diary, and she's just talking herself up a storm, you know, just how great she is and blah, 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 blah. Right. So, well. I didn't know if you had, you know an opinion on that but well that's my that's my opinion i think that a lot of those people are just trying to talk themselves into believing it for god's sake tom like come on 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 what do you like discuss when you want to bang a chick as little as possible the tom like show bomb dallas it's the tom like show thank you for tuning in thanks for being a part of our program boys night out Friday, June 17th, 8 p.m. at the Wiltern Theater. Now, this is something I cannot believe, but it's true. The best-selling tickets are the most expensive ones. I verified this today. And um, we had sold out of those yesterday, and we had to release a few more of them to the public because uh, there was such a demand. Literally, if you tried to get these tickets yesterday, they were not available. And now they are. We took back some comps, took back some people off the guest list. Nice knowing you. If we can sell these tickets, uh, of course we're going to. So uh, uh, if you're planning on seeing this show produced by myself and Bobby Slayton, I'm your MC. Three over-the-top outrageous male comedians talking to a largely male audience. We're not going to worry about whether they're, if any chicks show up, they're not going to worry about it. They're going to talk the way guys talk to other guys. You don't see a lot of that anymore. So there are a few tickets left in the uh, upper price ranges. If you want to get good seats, we've released a few more to the public. Uh, you've got to call Ticketmaster, 213-480-3232. That's 213-480-3232. Or go to Ticketmaster.com. We link to them on our website, blowmeuptom.com as well. It's Friday, June 17th. Boys Night Out, the world premiere at the Wiltern Theater in Los Angeles. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. I had a little time to think on our trip to Dallas and uh, kind of refine one of our theories here. And uh, indeed, it is true that the hotter the chick, the lower her self-esteem and the easier she is to pick off. But uh, how can you tell which of these chicks have the lowest self-esteem? They're the ones who work the hardest at looking perfect all the time. The ones you're most intimidated by are the ones who are the most afraid you won't like them. So they do everything they can, constantly changing their hair color, constantly primping, constantly touching up their makeup, because they're afraid you won't like them. This is, this is a sign of low self-esteem. And that's where you pounce. Manny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Yeah, no, I got a problem. I got this, uh, well, I'm 21, and I got this older brud. And, like, I met her, like, a couple of months ago. And How whatever, old is she? Know. She's, like, 36. 36, yeah. Yeah. 
which is something that I, which is something I've recommended on this program all the time. If you're 21, a 21 year old girl won't talk to you, uh huh, because she's dating a guy who's 30. Yeah. So well, I say, wh- yeah. I say, date older chicks now, because when you're 30, the 21 year old chicks will talk to you then. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that, that one who's going to be 21 when you're 30. Uh, <laughs> today she's uh, <laughs> 12. Yeah. She's in the 7th grade right now. That's yeah, your trophy wife of the future, pal. That will be your reward for putting up with nailing older broads in the meantime. Yeah, well, see, I'm nailing her, but she's falling in love with me, and I went on her for like two months. Time to move on. I know. She went, she's all oh, I love you, I love you. I'm like, hey, you know what? I didn't want to get attached. You know, we just have fun, go party, do whatever, and that's it. By the way, I'm so glad you brought this up because those older chicks, I, I, I always told you, when a 21-year-old guy goes up to a 36-year-old chick, the chick takes it like this. See, I've still got it. Look at this guy's falling for me. Look at me. People think I'm over the hill. Look at me. I've got a 21-year-old. They don't realize you're just there for the easy access. Well, all she uses me for mostly is she does all she's poking me. That's about it. Well, that's what that's what she's been telling you. But now you tell me she's falling in love with you. Yeah, she's falling in love with me. I mean, right? You know, I didn't want I didn't want that to happen. Well, that then it's time to go. Yeah. So you let her go, huh? Let her go. Believe me, there's plenty of other thirty-six-year-old flounders in the sea there. All right. That's all you have to do. Just move on. You're not going to fix this. If, well, yeah, you think no, you, if you think you can sit down with her and have a conversation and say, "Hey, uh, how about we just have sex?" She's not buying in on that one. Well, that happened the other day. You told her that. Yeah, she started talking and then she went. Well, she had sex with you, but the bottom line here is that she's still going to keep harassing you about being in love with you. That's not going to stop. Yeah, nonstop calling, nonstop crying, all she does. Yeah, well, time to go. All right, man up, man up, get out. All right. All right. All right. Thanks for your info. Thank you, Manny. Appreciate the call. I think we have a hot chick on the line right now. Uh, Sarah, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Do you care, Sarah? Of course I do. I'm doing great. That's good. Well, um, I just wanted to call you to tell you that you're totally right. The girls that are actually cute and actually have people tell them that they're cute have the worst self esteem. <laughs> That's right. I do. And You're one I'm of them. Always, hmm? you, now, tell us what you look like, Sarah. I'm 5 feet tall, about 98 pounds. Um, I'm a 34C. And, like, I don't know, like, I get attention and everything, but, like, I'm always in the mirror. I'm always trying to dress in seven jeans. I'm always in, like, juicy shirts, Versace, whatever, uh-huh. trying my best to look the best and... I still don't have any self-esteem. Never have. <laughs> oh, you're the girl of my dreams, for God's sake. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you, you're right. You're always right. I love you to death. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, if you're ever feeling low enough to uh, give me a call again, uh, please do that. Oh, next time, next time you're in Seattle. Oh, I'm just, I'm going to the party. You're signing my rack. I don't care. Really? <laughs> Take me out tribal style. Here you go. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. You signed it to Soju. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. First time, long time. Thank you. How you doing? Do you care, Rick? Yeah, I do. I'm doing great. Listen, Tom, man, I got a story for you, dude. You, all this self-esteem and stuff, you're right. You're correct. You know what? I went out with some fine-ass, beautiful girl, dude. She was uh, French, half French, half Indian. I would take her out to restaurants. Dude, I was so afraid of taking her out to restaurants because every time we would finish, because she would want to go to restaurants all the time, but every time we would finish eating and we'd go home to her house to, you know, to do it, she would always complain and they always tell me, do I look good? Do I, I think I ate too much. Man, all the time, complain. Was she but, one of those chicks who, after eating out with you, would then go home and get on the scale before she'd have sex with you? Well, forget it. She'd get in the mirror. She'd get in her, dude, but she was hot. 
she would wear these these skimpy you know la- lingerie and then get on the mirror and she was like do you think I'm gaining weight here do you think oh, I'm I was afraid of taking her out to eat bro because every time she would always want me to tell her she looked good constantly bugging me wow. telling me please tell me how do I look how do I and it just frustrating me man I, I had to let her go she just freaked me out unbelievable and she was hot though hot yeah and I took, La- but they, they proves what I'm saying right yeah it, it, exactly what you just said I mean I mean, I went out with another girl they, but they love eating they don't, They lie about that they love eating but they look hot but then after that all they do is complain about that you just, they're going to gain weight they they're probably put their finger down their throat when you're not looking you see that's what I'm saying that's but probably what they're doing girl, chunky girl, I would take a, I had this girl she was chunky hot beautiful but she was a little chunky she would never complain she would eat as much as she wanted to never complain she had all this uh, you know high self esteem she thought she looked hot you know what I mean she left me so I went with another hot girl <laughs> <laughs> those are the chicks with the high self esteem I keep telling people this yeah man but and you ever want evidence of this you know a- any daytime talk show with the chicks in the audience uh, who are all sassy right with there you know, sassing off on the guests and stuff but look at these chicks look at them yeah well, hey, Tom, you know, nice talking to you. Uh, can you take me out Kobe style with the bong hit? Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. Take some. From Dallas, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Ed on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, man? Doing okay, Ed. I'm falling apart here, man. I listened to your show for a while, and I really appreciate some of what you said. And I've been married for 20 years, and my wife just told me that she's in love with a guy she met over the Internet, which she hasn't even met face-to-face yet, and she's in love with him, and she is going to leave me for him, along with my three children. And your money, believe me. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, I make money, and I, and I have a little trouble. I lost a company recently, so I've had some problems. But, I, dude, you get one point for every point on American Express. I have 728,000 American Express points. And guarantee uh, that money, I'm sorry. 728,000? Do you know how much yeah. money that is? Yes, I know what three quarters of a million dollars is like. Do you know what it's like to spend $30,000 in Nordstrom's? That's what she's got in her life. And instead, you know what I got in response? She gained 400 pounds. She was up to 400 pounds. And then finally, last year, she snaps, and she decides in January to lose 80 pounds. And I thought, oh, my God, finally, my wife is coming back to me. I'm going to have my love of my life back. And then she tells me, I walk in on her, actually, talking sex with some guy over the, on a cell phone and saying at the end of it, oh, I love you, I miss you, goodbye, and giving him a kiss. And I, t- I confronted her, and she's like, well, I'm no longer in love with you. I'm in love with this guy. He's 20 years old. She's 41. Well, this is going to fly. He lives uh-huh. in Chicago. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, hello, and and, and don't here worry, I am. she'll I'm take fine. she'll take your money and fly to see him. Dude, I'm dying. I don't. I, I, I you know, quite frankly, I told her I'd buy you a ticket. Go see him because you're going to be floored when you meet this guy. They hadn't even exchanged pictures. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, this guy's going to have a coronary when he meets her. And you know, the, the sad thing, Thomas, I love this woman, and I can't figure out how to frickin' tell her. She won't give me a chance, you know? So she tells me, oh, well, I don't think our, our, our goals are mutually the same anymore. Her goals... How, how convenient when you had some trouble with your business that suddenly yeah, she felt well, this that, way. That, that's, a big, that's a big fear for me. I keep thinking that it isn't that, but i got to be ta- honest. Listen to you talk over and over. I keep thinking to myself, yeah, okay, the money starts to dry up and she goes away. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. But, you know, what, what I really think it is, like midlife crisis. You were talking about self-esteem? It's all about self-esteem for her, you know? You know, she was overweight, she's losing weight now, and you know what kills me? For 20 years, I never said a single word about her weight, Tom. Not one, because I loved her. What an idiot I was. Her parents would give her crap, her friends would give her crap, not me ever, not once. I would just say, I love you, honey, don't worry about it. And you know what kills me about it? It's like, if she starts losing the weight, the energy's coming back, we're having... Oh, now it's coming back, now that she has a young guy. Tom Likes his show.